we going live, but I don't know. We're having a special, special uh, podcast tonight and uh, special evenings. I'm not used to being here on a Saturday evening, but my guest here right now is going to be uh, uh, with us, along with Tyrone, the West African Floyd, uh, I, Isaac Bouton, and my co-host, LaDonna Sherwood, and Francis Lockett. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, hey. Hey, how you doing? All right, all right. I'm trying to get on here. And I think my deal got raced, so I'm going to. Uh, we're going to. I need a format. I I forgot my format. Yeah, I got a format, right? Right. We have right. it. I have right. it. Well, this is folks. Oh, so we're going to say this. This is the urban. Um, this is the urban league. Uh, uh, urban, urban, urban team. Beaumont Urban Podcast. Yeah. Correct. All right. I'm gonna I'm let before we get started. We want to let everyone know that we are here again um, uh, with Knowledge is Power Podcast Live, and I've got a little technical problem here on Facebook, so I'm going to post out and post back in. You guys are going to be on the air. I'll, I'll be back screen, okay? So let's get started. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live with your host, Tony Redfro, and my co-host, LaDonna Sherwood and Francis Lawkins. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live starts now. All right, guys, if you watch this show tonight, or this is the Knowledge is Power Podcast Live show on a Saturday night. If you're watching this tonight, are you going to be viewing this tonight? Let me let you know this is some powerful stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. And I'm going to let Isaac with uh, Prospective just kick us off with an introduction. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm Isaac <laughs> Mouton. I'm on the Prospective along with uh, T. And, um, man, I, I think what we're all just coming together for is, you know, all together, I think we all have a big group. I think somewhere between 10,000 up to like 25,000 uh, followers, so we all came up with the idea uh, come together and just put our politicians and hold our, our local fish uh, accountable by having a uh, debate April 3rd. Uh, so we, we want to hear from you guys. We want to hear your questions. We want to make sure that our listeners, our followers uh, be heard. And, and I think this is a perfect platform to reach a large amount of people to help uh, get the guys and gals out there to uh, vote for who they think is going to be best for our community, for our city. Tyron, yes, sir. Guy, you go, we can you can chime this little show here. I have here. You can chime in anytime you want to. We're going to talk about and discuss what we got. Uh, so, what I want to do, guys, is one by one each team. I like you to tell you who, what's your name of your podcast and your mission statement yeah so hey man thanks first of all thanks for having me on and uh, it's good to see everybody um tonight saturday night so so yeah my name's uh teron man i'm with the uh, perspective um just kind of how our show kind of even came about was um we wanted to to do bring positive light to some of the things that was happening in our community um specifically a lot of the positive things that, that's happening even in our African-American community and our schools. And so uh, we got together, it's, it's four of us. So you've got uh, Isaac there. We always show up and say, Isaac, uh, he's uh, Mr. Magnolia. He represents the North End very well. Uh, my, myself, I, I happen to pastor a church here called 5, 519 Church here in Beaumont. 
We have uh, AJ, who's uh, AJ Turner, who's running for uh, city at large position. And then we have Josh Lamb with Lamb Productions, who does just a great job highlighting and uh, the next generation of middle school and high school. Um, he shoots the video games, broadcasts the video games, getting a lot of our local kids some attention from, from uh, colleges already in middle school. So he does a great job. So we said, what are we going to get when we bring these four men in, uh, in a room? We're going to get different perspectives. All of us are fathers. All of us are trying to impact our community in a different way. But more importantly, we want to discuss things from whether that's from the field house of a local, a local field house to the White House to what's going on in our house. We want to talk about all of the positive things that are going on. But also with us all being African-Americans, just to show that there is depth and there's range in the African-American community. We're not monolithic. So even though all of us may look look alike and all of us may come from similar backgrounds, we have different perspectives uh, about how we want to see our, our city improve. So that's kind of what the show is about, the perspective. And uh, we're, we're excited just to be along with some of these other great podcasts that are out here and all coming from our city. So proud of that. Great, great messages. And, and let me just if, let me just emphasize this: is that we are a, we are a team of podcasters. Uh, each each one of us are on once a week, and we're on twice a week. And what we want to do is we're coming together as 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 and we're coming together as podcasters, but we're coming together uni with unity to bring a message to our community. You see, a lot of times we have to work as a team. It takes teamwork to, 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 to increase our, not just our, what our message is, but we want to pass this information on to our community so we can grow as a community with unity. So tonight, I, I don't know if you know that we've got, uh, she was not able to be with us tonight. We have De Deborah Jones. Uh, uh, that is with the uh, Blue Table Talk. She's not with us. She's not able to be with us. But we have also Tyrone. He just spoke, uh, and, and he's with. The, uh, go back. What's your name again, Tyrone? The uh, the, perspective, the perspective podcast. The perspective, right? And then we have Isaac Mouton with perspective, and we got L Floyd. You was gonna say Lil Floyd. <laughs> I know his dad a little well. He, 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 he little than him, you know. But <laughs> I told I told him we might be watching this, so you might have to watch out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we know uh, the West African, the West African uh, uh, hero here. We are here together to to bring a, a powerful message to our community, so we can communicate. We are we we we're. we're, we're We've got so much going on and we want to do it together. So it takes more than one podcast, one podcaster. Uh, so I, I, I welcome more. We, we don't have enough. We really don't have enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to do it, get involved. Let's get involved in the community. Now, um, my co-host, um, LaDonna, I'd like you to uh, just give our message what we're all about. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live is a platform to share important information by educating Southeast Texas African American communities with viable information on health, education, finances, politics, and business. We pride ourselves on having our hands on the pulse of Beaumont, making sure that we update you on what is going on in and around your community, and we make sure to bring it to you straight and we give you different alternative mind states of how to look at things and how to approach different areas and avenues of your life. We're excited about tonight. And I guess who's going to be next is West African Floyd. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about the kickback so we can get updated. <laughs> yeah, okay. So kickback, um, kickback. Uh, <laughs> West African Floyd, I got a podcast called The Kickback, and my podcast, it, it varies. So uh, one night we might be having fun. We might be talking about, you know, some crazy topics. And then the next week we might be talking to uh, a politician where the people of my community can get educated. Because what I want, what I believe as far as my podcast is, uh, it's, it speaks to the people who normally, I'm not going to lie to you, normally that don't vote. It be the people that you might be seeing hanging in the hood and chilling, and uh, I like to speak for them. You know, my voice is for them because when I 
around town and stuff, you know, they like to say, hey, man, that was some good questions and we didn't know about that. So I like to speak for the unspoken. And, you know, it's the kickback. We have everybody on there. So, <laughs> you know, it's universal. We cater to all. It's not a white or black thing. You know, it's not a Christian Muslim thing or nothing like that. It's it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's good vibe. So. Yeah, you have a good show, man. Um, I appreciate you uh, stepping out there with the energy that you do. And, uh, you know, I'm, don't, I have a little time to catch you a little bit, but I don't want to catch you the next two or three days later. But uh, it, it being a big, good podcaster, we have to share information among us ourselves. Uh, and like I always tell you, for our teamwork, we got to, to increase our, our, our visibility, our increase our message. We have to come together and help each other out. This is how it's done. So this is the reason, people, why we are doing this show is because uh, I'm going to go to the, the – there we go. We're having – I was about to say, where's uh, DJ, DJ Man TV? Where are they? I don't, well, I don't know. They're going to kick in in a minute. But anyway, uh, this is the Beaumont – we are the Beaumont Urban Podcast, and uh, we are going to be presenting a uh, podcast debate on April the 3rd at 4 30. It's going to be hosted by uh DJ Man TV, uh Perspective, the Kickback, Blue Table Talk, and of course uh Knowledge is Power Podcast Live. And uh, we want to help us uh, our community here in Beaumont. We want to make sure that you all know who our politicians are, what their their what their goals are, what their plans are, uh, if it's for us. You know, we're just not going to vote for a, a person that's just somebody help me because I'm I'm gonna I'm go too deep. <laughs> Francis, <laughs> hey, how are you? Yes. Well, I, I would say I would say that that even in our community, I'm from the north end. Uh, T's from Tara Arch. Even in our community, our communities get overlooked year after year. Um, like I said, I'm 38 years old. I left Beaumont, came back to Beaumont, and Magnolia, the I was raised on this exact same bumps are there. This hood looks a little bit worse than when I left. Uh, so I think we get overlooked. So in, in, in doing this, getting together and putting this all together and, and actually being heard, I think that this would allow the politicians to know that, hey, we're serious. We're serious about this. And thousands and thousands of followers behind us that are going to come out here and if you're not going to take care of our streets and our ends, like we like we see other other places get taken care of, hey, we're going to get you out of office, or we're going to put the people in office in the seat who is going to take care of us. Isaac, I like the way you rep that North End too, my brother. You rep it well. <laughs> now, I think uh, if I could just chime in too, uh, no problem. I, I agree with what with uh, with with everything everybody else has already said and i think one of the things that i think is going to be powerful with the with, what, what i think we're all individually doing already with our show is just you know raising the standard and the expectations that we have of ourselves of the communities that we stay in but i but i'm really excited uh about the debate that we're going to do because like you say um we may not be able with collectively all of us we may have a good a pretty good perspective on 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 how our people feel and some of the issues that they have and we're going to be able to present it to them and see and, and for maybe for the first time they're going to have to actually really give some thought and give some answers and show us some plans of how they're going to help uh help us see some improvement uh to to our community some of the ones that are most overlooked and that's not you know just the north end the power archer um the entire city of beaumont wherever uh our entire city we want to see improve. so uh, i just i'm, I'm excited because i think some accountability is going to come out of, out of what we're doing here and if i could just piggyback on that i feel like the transparency that's going to be warranted after everybody when you know that the perspective the kickback the blue table talk knowledge is power and dj man tv is all on your road then you know you got to bring it straight because otherwise we're going to get together we're going to have a meeting and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable and we're going to press for that transparency that's going to be important so i'm looking forward to the debate and i'm looking forward to the conglomeration of podcasters because i feel like we're all pressing for the same thing, which is a better Beaumont, 
a more complete Beaumont, a more whole Beaumont, a, a better, bigger Beaumont that's going to represent the needs of the people. And we are the people because we're the majority in Beaumont. And at the end of the day, except we do it, it won't get done. We can't sit on our hands and wait for somebody else to come and take care of what we need to take care of in our community. We have to press forward on that mission and make sure that we or in the forefront of needs to happen in our community. That's what we need to do. I'm excited. I'm here for it. Well, um, I'm going to add to what LaDonna said. Um, I'm I'm really grateful for this podcast, being that I am one of those people that have been in the community and hearing what people say. I often block walk. I help with a lot of campaigns. So it's super important that everyone feel that they are included in that information is readily available to them. So I can... I can actually say I, there's a great appreciation for each of you gentlemen just, um, you know, adding something new, something different, something that's going to actually target different audiences and kind of bring them in and let them know what's going on. The information is there. All, too many times and so often we hear people from different walks of life as we're all different. Um, say, oh, well, I didn't know or I didn't have a clue and is the information out there? Do I ever see these politicians? I think that um, actually everyone coming together in a conglomerate way will target all of those audience that audiences that may have missed or feel that they are not included. All you have to do is log in or um, be on Facebook. So I find a really, 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 really great appreciation for each of these platforms represented here tonight. And I would like to say too, also is, uh, I think this is probably the most important election of our lifetime as far as Beaumont goes. Um, being the fact that Becky has been in office for like 12, 14 years and she's been a councilman for maybe another 12, I don't know the numbers, but uh, it's gonna be a different regime. And I think that the people that we have now that are running for a council or mayor, they wanna make a change in Beaumont. So I think this is going to be important. And I think it's going to be a lot of voters that's going to turn out also, to be honest with you, because I'm going to say now that we have all these different platforms, now we can promote voting in Beaumont uh, more efficient because the last turnout was really, it was really, Terrible. yeah, it's really Terrible. embarrassing. And, and you know, I pride myself on doing the get out the vote. Mm -hmm. I worked on get out the vote effort. One person this that. last election, I targeted over two hundred people personally that I saw to the polls. I feel like we need to charge every person in Beaumont with the responsibility of somebody else. I don't care how many you can get. You be if I see you can get seven, then I want you to get fourteen. It doesn't matter. We need to charge everybody with going out to vote. These local elections are where it matters most. And I'm not going to say that national elections don't matter. Somebody's mic is popping. But these local elections are where the implementation of policy happens for our community. Yes, community. These are the people that distribute the money and the budget for our community. These are the people that are policing our community. This, this is the election that matters. So if each one reach one, matter of fact, don't reach one, reach 10. You go out and get 10 people that you're going to sponsor, that you're going to walk to the post, that you're going to write their name down and follow them up to the location. That's what we need to do. We need to get one person accountable for a bunch of people and let that and let it spread from there. I'm excited about that, Flo. I'm glad you said that. We, we're going to get the vote out. Those those voter turnouts are embarrassing and not, and not when we're the majority in this community. It's unfortunate and it's, it's unacceptable. that are running now i think they understand now you have to really uh you got to really campaign and you really got to be about your message because people are paying attention now i mean i mean before like with those low vote turnouts i mean i guess they was thinking like well you know people don't vote you know if i got my little base i'm good but now mm -hmm. you know a lot of attention is being brought upon the city of Beaumont. so i think now they're understanding like look okay i gotta really make a commitment because they'll vote me out they get together, they go vote me now. And now they're actually paying attention. So, uh, you know what I say, Floyd? I say heads gonna roll. <laughs> I say heads I'm gonna roll. Well, I'm, we, I'm excited. It's almost like the Super Bowl for me. Well, um, we, May time. <laughs> it's like we, Christmas. I can't wait. I can't wait till May. Yeah, we have the numbers. We just don't you know go what? 
I look at it like Game of Thrones. In 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 in, in our politics, either you win or you die. <laughs> Somebody, the mic is popping. The, the, uh, guys, let me ask y'all about the low vo voter turnout. Uh, I think Floyd um, kind of said something earlier about it, but do you feel like the low vo voter turnout is a result of people just not having confidence in politicians and just a lot of people? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. You guys can kind of help me with the demographics, but maybe the 20s to mid-30s or late 30s, um why do you think that, that there's such a low turnout in there when and and like you I say I, I, I know for sure there's guys that we talk to in the neighborhoods guys that you know work in plants guys that are you know taxpayers um very productive citizens but just don't want to participate i mean what would y'all say is, is some of the reasons on that? and have y'all observed that as well uh, well yes and I'll answer, I'll answer that. Um, I'm sorry, I hear a lot of you know, uh, very productive citizens, but just don't want to participate. I mean, what would y'all say is some of the reasons for that? And have y'all observed that as well? Uh, well, yes. And I'll answer, I'll answer that. Um, I'm sorry, I hear a lot of you know, uh, I think it's the feedback, it's the reverb on somebody. I mean, what would y'all say is some of the reasons for that? And have y'all Okay, are we clear? LaDonna, can you hear me? I can okay. Hear you. okay, very good. So just from doing some block walking from this previous election, I've just heard that, you know, people are just completely turned off and don't feel that they have um, the opportunity, as I mentioned before, to connect to the politicians and that their voices are just unheard. Now, I don't know what we could do as a platform to actually remedy that problem, but I do know that they feel like it is pointless to go and cast a vote that, you know, people are just going to basically do whatever they want to do and that it's a hoax. So, you know, going in and block walking and trying to rationalize with some with some people are just i mean it's a lost cause because they think what they think and you do not have all day to debate so my my thing is is just finding out a way or figuring out a way to basically touch those individuals that obviously feel that there is no hope in the vote so that's a tagline no hope in the vote so don't know how we can reach those folks you know and, so anyone can speak to that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, uh, I think a lot of people, I think in the local I'm politics, sorry, we hadn't seen a lot of um, people get, nobody get excited about uh, any, of the, any of the candidates. So usually if this past national election, you know, people are excited one way or another, they're excited for Trump or excited to get him out. Uh, same thing here, like, you know, people, we hadn't had any candidates that really, really got people excited here. I think this year uh, the local elections will be a lot different there. I think a lot of people are really excited about some of the people, got some new faces out here uh, and, and some people that, that are passionate about uh, making some changes inside uh, our city and BISD. So I, I think, um, like I said, a lot of these local uh, politicians hadn't really got anybody excited. I think that, that can be a cause too. Yeah, I think I think it's because like a lot of people really didn't care. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think when it came around to local elections, a lot of people didn't care. And uh, I mean, it's been a few times that I didn't even vote for a local election. So I'm just speaking on that point of view as far as like a lot of people not caring. But I think now it's like a, it's like a balloon. You know, it, it got big and finally it bust. And, and people are seeing the problems of Beaumont and they're tired of it now. Right. So yeah. I think as far as. I'm as sorry. Far as, voicing our opinion, as far as voicing our opinions and uh, and our concerns on these uh, politicians and these uh, councilmen and, and even the mayor, I, I think they've been comfortable for a long time. I think they've been comfortable. They've been comfortable in their position. They ain't had they haven't had any heat put on them. So, I mean, if I go at a certain person, I'm just putting heat on that person because they, it's been comfortable. You know, when you get comfortable, you know, the passion. The passion slips a little bit, you know. So uh, I think everybody needs to have some 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 heat put on them, regardless. I mean, I know it's only a two year term, but some of these people been 
been councilman and, and, and mayor for over 10 plus years and they've been comfortable. So, I mean, it's time for some change. Either, I think it, either make the change or, or, or you could get ghost. They don't pay enough. They don't pay enough anyway. So you either, you need, you need to care about this position. This ain't a paycheck. That paycheck small. Right. <laughs> I was just fixing to say, I feel like the, the more that we, as podcasters and a community activist, the more that we shed light on these elections, the more that we get excited, the more that we get energized, the more that we provide transparency, the more that we make it like it's a big deal, the more that we get the community involved, the more the community will be involved. I think a lot of the lackluster uh, attitude towards voting has been because they felt like that the, the the people that are participating would never change. Right. Now that we have new participants, I think those new participants are going to energize the community because you're giving me something different to look forward to than just the status quo. You're giving me something to dis- different to look forward to than just a bunch of all white men in suits or whatever the case may be. And it may be more white men in suits. That may be more of the same, but if, if they come out with a message that's energized that reflects what we want and need then we can go with that i think our job here is to make sure that we energize the people in the community on the perspective on the kid back on knowledge is power on blue table talk and we get them involved like hey look this is what's happening this is what this person said this is what this person promised this is what they got going on somebody's running against this person and they're running against them for this reason and all of those things play a factor in how the community responds. And when they see what's at stake, which economic development and, and infrastructure and, and, and schools and different things of this nature, I think it changes the dynamic. So I'm looking forward to it. I know the voter turnout has been low. I know that we didn't have what the people wanted and they stayed back. But maybe when we produce some new candidates, then it will, it, it will re-energize the community about what's happening and what's going on and what could happen in the future. And then we can get some accountability going because if they see us voting, then they'll know, hey, we're going to get together and get you out. You either, you you do what you're supposed to do or you out. Before, there was no accountability on either part because they didn't believe that we were going to show up. And if they know that we're going to show up, when we go to them city council meetings and we go to them commissioner court meetings and we show up at these different events, school board meetings, they're going to be like, oh, they getting ready to do something. Right. But before they didn't think we was getting ready to do nothing. So now I'm excited for all of this togetherness because they know we coming. We coming. We coming. Something's going to happen. Well, I will uh, speak to this, and I spoke to this before. I do think um, due to the Black Lives Matter movement, it has kind of, in, it, it's opened the eyes to a lot of individuals that, and caught the attention of a lot of individuals that um, otherwise wouldn't have paid attention to politics previously or saw the importance of politics in your community. So um, that is definitely something that um, I know will probably, you know, continue you know we can't let that die obviously we, i mean that's just a part of it. it all plays you know rolls together so i think that's uh, a- i think too um you know we the tenure of some of them some of them have been there a very long time and and so yeah you know they do need some accountability but i think mm-hmm. also if we're just honest too like just the current state of the of the city council uh like they just for lack of a better word there was a lot of pettiness uh, there was a lot of division, and and I feel like whenever those things are at the forefront, then there are other important issues that are being overlooked. And usually, if something's being overlooked, it's most likely going to affect uh, the communities that we have a high interest in, the North End, the Power Archie. Uh, and so, the current state, the current ex- our expectations for our city councilmen is they they need to be professionals. They need to represent us well. And so, whether you've been there ten years to whatever it is we do want to you know get the message across to them what we've seen over the last year the national the the climate of the national political scene making its way down into our local that's unacceptable that's unacceptable and i don't care if you are you know highly favored by your ward if you are 
um, you know, a, the baby messiah to your war, your war, and people look up to you. That's not going to be expected. And not only that, we saw that a lot of the city councilmen have leveraged the influence that that position gave them to now leak over and to influence the BISD uh, board and what's yes. happening in the yes. BISD. And, yes. and in a negative way, most of the time, it's not a bridge. It's not anything where they're trying to make a positive relationship. So that current uh, behavior is not going to be acceptable. And it should not be acceptable even if I favor my 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 the guy who's representing my ward, that, that's just pastor. I'm with you. I think heads should roll. Okay, if you don't represent the group and what the group needs, you need to go. You know, we talked about this two years ago. We lost someone. Who we lost? Uh, Isaac. I think we lost Isaac. Yeah. We talked about this two years ago. I, I ran for city council at large, and, um, and you know we we worked the, the uh, we block walked we 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 knocked on doors we did mailers, but we still failed to get the people to the polls, and um, this has been going on for a while, I guess, and. Um, um, I think that, uh, let me move over here. There we go. I think that we've got to come with a strategy for this coming, and I believe we are doing that, but we need to come up with a stronger strategy to be able to reach out to those those that, that did not vote and bring them in. Also find out those that did vote in the November election, and these are people that we need to knock on doors. We need to knock on their doors. Those, those folks that voted in November election, that was a big turnout. Those are the people that we need to bring to the poll in May. Yeah, and I think we need to stress the importance of local elections. They matter most because they affect your day-to-day -day life Absolutely. those are the elections that are affecting you when you're driving down the street or in the house that you live in or the school that you take your child to or uh you know the the, the stuff you see when the street lights is off or on or you driving down the street it's a bump on the road or water and sewage is backing up in your yard these are the elections that you need to vote for these are the elections that we need you to show up for the ones that are affecting you and your children oh, and right back are the people that we need to be able to get on the phone. These are the people that we need to be able to walk into the office and say, I, I have a problem or this is going wrong or I disagree or whatever the case may be. These are the elections that we need to see you in. And I think people drop the ball on these elections because they feel like they don't matter. No, these are the elections that matter most. Oh, let me inter inter interject here, and I'm gonna go back. And you, what you said there, Ladonna, is very, very important. That's you are correct. Yeah. But let me interject to uh, Pastor Tyrone. You, you said something about, and I and I know where you're going about the uh, the division in our city uh, uh, council. I'm gonna just say it like it is. There's, there's division in there, and that's it's, it's petty and it's it's ugly and it's it's it's, it's, it's just despicable. It's just it's just pitiful. And we've got a officer that is in there that is putting a fire, uh, putting it on fire. And he's setting the fire and he's looking for a, um, see how far it burned. And then he's going to go there and try to put it out. And also, we must understand we've got to be careful on uh, the candidates that's coming in that's been bought and sold. We've got to be careful. So I'm telling you people right now, you're watching, share out share this podcast uh, with your friends, neighbors, and loved ones because we are here to educate our community. And that's one of the things that we're like. Our people are not educated, and we have to educate them 
on the matter of voting and how important it is to vote and who to vote for. Right. And we got to decide on that collectively as a group so that we're not divided, but we're united. And then they'll know that we coming. We coming. It ain't, it's not just talk. We coming. And I don't think they realize that, but we coming. We I coming. I, you, know, you know what I think? We need to also hold our friends accountable, too. I mean, we need to, I mean, if they don't vote, we need to stay on them. We, we got we to gotta stay on our friends and our family, our cousins and whoever else. You vote? No, I didn't vote yet. I'm going to go tomorrow. Right. Well, make sure you go tomorrow. You need me to bring you? We got to, you know, we got to put an emphasis on our people voting. We got to make sure they vote. We can't just go vote and be like, hey, I'm straight. I voted. I'm good. You know, we got to make sure our people vote, too. If you got to bring them to that booth, you know, that's just what you have to do. And uh, right. I just think we gotta check ourselves too. We gotta, we gotta. My make family, sure. no, I'm crazy. And, and not no only family that, but when I, I made a collage recently after the last election, and I had over 200 voters that I personally had their picture with my picture next to their picture. We together. You know why I did that? Because I wanted people to know that it's doable. It's not outside your reach to reach 200 people. I reached 200 people by myself in about six weeks. I got 200 photos with people that I personally took or sponsored or talked to or walked up to the polls. And I'm not saying everybody needs to be me. I'm not saying that everybody needs to be me. All I'm saying is <laughs> pick seven. Get you seven or eight or nine or ten people that you're going to personally call them hound them like you say get them on the phone did you vote today did you vote yesterday who are you bringing with you to vote what's going on and y'all take your picture and send it to me we need to do that we need to make people accountable brandon was saying have people post uh, their stickers i know for the election uh, uh the presidential election people was posting their stickers and i and i noticed a lot of people that was hating on people posting their stickers like oh you went to go vote just to post just to post a uh, a sticker. He don't care as long as you voted. Yeah, as long as you voted, and it, and I was seeing this from a, a certain particular group of people, the so-called woke yeah. people. But um, I think these woke, yeah, I think these woke woke people now for this local election. Uh, you know, y'all need to vote. I, I understand the presidential election, and y'all didn't like either candidate. But when this pertains to your child in the city that you live in, it's time for you to. Uh, you know, put that little woke pride to the side. Preach. Uh, make a difference because, you know, I, I see a lot of complaining and a lot of down in our people, but I don't see a lot of uh, answers to making it better. So, I mean, you know, hey, the right now, brother preacher. I'm telling my son, woke people, but, you know, hey, I want to see y'all do something instead of complaining about people that. And for some, them. this sticker isn't an is a, I mean, it is an incentive. I love my sticker, I put it everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. And Terry Roy's I, I made a comment here and I'm looking at it. It makes a lot of sense. The people to blame is the foul city issues are, are, are ourselves because we don't go vote. And we don't vote. So, um, well, I think um, for one, can we, we not skip past wanna, uh, 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 what's the name? Uh, sure uh, I want to touch up on uh, <laughs> All right, we you voted. Not, we ahead. voted in the national election because we thought a lot. We thought a lot of little on the line. Pretty much, we we thought that you know, hey, things go for the worst. It's the same thing in the city right now. It's like you can't believe it. Hey, there's jobs on the line right now. There's people right now that wants to be busted. to be um, jobs. All the drivers, and all the mechanics that work on the bus, that's their jobs done. Everybody can do something to you go to work, go shopping, go walk, go to work, no key. That's all going to change. The, the, the hey, Isaac, you, Isaac, around, Isaac, I think we talked about it a lot on our show. Isaac, you're breaking up quite a bit. Uh, sure. and you've got a little delay. Uh, probably won't you sign sure. out and mm -hmm. sign back in so Before we can hear what and, okay, I'm gonna move on to my path to Tyrone. Go ahead, Tyrone. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so 
I was gonna say really quick. I mean, everybody, Mrs. Sherwood, I think is her name. So we're gonna start calling her Southeast Texas Stacy Adams now. That's what Stacey we're gonna call Abrams. Her. Is that better? Stacy Abrams. I'm sorry, Stacy Abrams. Yes, you're right. Making it happen. Can I can I pose a question to us too though? I, we did see the turnout because I think it was either or it was so polarized. It was like people uh, really disliked President Trump. Um, or they really liked him? Like we, when we saw that with the numbers. So I do think what we're doing here, I think that it's a, it's a, a balanced dichotomy what we're doing. We are putting pressure. We've got Southeast Texas. We got very own Southeast Texas, Mr. Stacey Abrams here. We've been putting pressure on the people to turn out. I think what we're going to have an opportunity to do this go around is put a lot of pressure on the candidates, right? Um, right. I think like when it was like we just had a turkey leg hut out here a few weeks ago, <laughs> and uh, I'm not getting into all the backdrop. Of I know, I know what you, I know exactly what you're going to say. No, no, no. What I'm getting at is that we saw people turn out when they were excited about something, when they right. were, when they liked the option that was presented. To them, they were turned right. out. So we, 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 I think what we have an opportunity to do is to vet these candidates to, to see how they're going to be held accountable, to make it clear to them that we're going to hold them accountable. And I think, even there's, I think this crowd, we don't like this traditional politician. We, we want to see somebody that's going to state how you feel. And I want you to state how you feel and what your plans is when you're sitting at the table with me or if you're sitting at the table with somebody else. But if, you, if, it, if it comes off as if you're trying to politician us, where you're saying what you think we want to hear, I think that that people's discernment level, especially in this season, is a whole lot higher, and that turns people off. So we don't want to see a person that's just saying one thing to one table, getting at another table. And so even for, you say, hold our friends accountable for the individuals that I have uh, like that are friends with us, someone like AJ. I assure you that we're holding him accountable and that we're having tough conversations with him and that are you or what you're saying when you're at the table with us is what you're saying when you're at the table with somebody else. And we need to make sure with Mike Getz, with Taylor Neal, um, with whoever else is running, Pastor Phil Shaw, uh, Becky, uh, well, it was Becky, it was Mayor Ames, but like, I think that we have to put just as much pressure on them. We, I do, I do, I for sure want to see us challenge the community, but man, we need to put some pressure on them. And, and if our options are better, I think that we'll see the turnout go up. I'm proud of you, Pastor. You hit the nail on the head on that one because when the candidate selection goes up, so does the voter turnout and the participation and the anticipation and excitement because now we have a level of candidates that have stepped up their game. And when they step up their game, what they bring into the community and they know that we're coming, to hold them accountable, then they're going to be quick to cut them lies out and they're going to say what they can do and they're going to say what they can't do and they're going to announce when they made an error and what they anticipate the ability to do and they're going to give you an update as a community on what I could not do and why I could not do it. If I, if I promise you something and I can't deliver on that promise, it don't matter if you fail, it matters how you recover on the failure. Were you honest? Were you open? Did you explain to us what obstacles and what hindered you? What stood in your way? You know, my Bible tells me you ran well, but what hindered you? So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happened. It mattered what your situation was. And we know that truth and lies cannot stand together. The truth is going to set you free. If I attempted to do the things that I said I was going to do. And I had a hindrance on so-and-so and so-and-so and so. These things affect the community and how we can assist you because the community has a lot of power. So, you know, I, I'm, you know, and I hate to go here, but I'm, I'm reminded of Barack Obama. He had a bunch of ideas and a bunch of things that he wanted to do and a bunch of things that he wanted to accomplish. But the Senate and the House, they hindered him because they, they did not promote his ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come forward and you say, you know what, I put this project forward, but they they declined or I made a I made a motion for these things and they were declined or I I attempted to do this. But if you lie, you just lying. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Them lies would not 
the Bible says a lie not going to tear in the sight. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you just need to tell it straight and let us make a decision as a community because the community may actually be able to assist you in some of your endeavors and removing some of the things that have hindered you. You know, those things matter. I'm excited that you said that, Pastor. That was We've, we got uh, Ike back, so Ike Mouton. Let's see what you got with us. Now, fi now finish what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just saying that that uh, for those, you know, like I said, we voted in the national because we thought our livelihood was on on uh, on the line. Lose our livelihood, you right, know, right. Were, we were in danger, and the same thing going on right here in the city. If we're not paying attention, like mm -hmm. I said, the bus drivers, uh, our bus system is on the line right now. There's people who wants to remove the whole bus system. That's jobs for all the bus drivers all the mechanics, everybody who works in that department. And not only that, but also a lot of people who are using those <laughs> those systems to, to transport to work, to go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. to get to wash your clothes. All of that is on the line right now. And also, you know, uh, can I, I ask you a question, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. What, who, which particular, or, or who are the councilmen that are, uh, that do not want the city bus line? Uh, it, it's it's gets. It's my gets. It's okay, okay. That's all I want you. I want, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm not I'm afraid. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, he, he wants to get. He wants to get rid of the line, and, and he wants to put in. I mean, I mean, it's he wants to put in a, a a ride share. But if if you look on Uber right now, there's probably only two cars out here, and you're getting about 400 to 500 people riding the bus day. How is two cars going to get four to 500 people around Beaumont? to go to work, to go to wherever they need to do to take care of their business. But uh, I, mean, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but yeah, yeah. I, and, so, and, and, and I'm going to ask that uh, the question I'm going to ask now is how it's not going to happen, but so how are we going to overcome this particular issue? We got to show mean, up. You got to show up. You got to show up. And Which, you need those four seats for the votes, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, wait a second. I'm going to turn your mic on uh, West African floor. How, how long my mic been muted? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> no. But no, no. What happened? I heard some little popping. And and I said, well, let me let me mute this, these mics so that I can make sure we don't hear that popping in, in the audio. So I got you. It's hard to to listen to something and it's nothing but popping noisy. So let's. I think we have good audio now. So let's chime on in. West okay. Africa, what, what Ladonna was talking about as far as holding these um, politicians accountable um, with social media these days, because social media is the wave now. These mm -hmm. these politicians now need to start communicating with us as people. If you can't get something passed in South Park or the North End due to other councilmen not voting and, and getting this passed, then you need to let us know. Let us know that you're trying to get something passed in our community and you're having issues because other councilmen are not voting. And, and we'll show up instead of creating all these rumors because we don't hear from you. We don't under, we don't not, not everybody's going to go to that meeting at 1 30 in the evening because we have to work. So due to social media, if you can't get something built in South Park because the other councilmen are not passing it, then let us know, let the people know, and we'll show up there. And, and, and we can understand what your problem is instead of creating rumors saying that, hey, oh, you don't care and all that type of stuff. Communicate with the people. You got social media. You got to adapt with the times. So use social media to your, um, to your best ability. If you can't use social media, then... I mean, as far as being a politician, then you're going to lose power anyway, because that's the way. That's what most people connect that's to. That's what I've been saying. If you're in politics and you're promoting something and you're working towards something and you got a goal on the table and you pushing for this project and you coming uh, and, and you're being met by challenges, let the people know. Exactly. Let the people know. Well, I'm being, I'm and being, the city put your hand meeting. up and say, hey, time out. This is what the meetings this, are online. They're online. They're posted. This is where on CNN, they say full stop. When you, look, full stop. I'm sitting here uh, doing this and this and that, and I can't get anything done. I can't make any headway. I have attempted with my co my cohorts and my peers. They're not seeing things my way. My constituents have asked me to do this. Those constituents 
can put pressure on other constituents that may be able to get what you're trying to get accomplished. But if we don't know that you are promoting this goal, that you are going towards this goal, then we don't know what you're talking about. It looks as if you're doing nothing and you may be getting railroaded or bombarded by another group of people that's standing in your way. Baby, let the people know because heads will roll. Heads will roll. We coming. We coming. It's a different day in Beaumont, baby. I'm glad for what we got going on. It's a brand new day in Beaumont, Texas. That foolishness that we've been going with and, and enduring and encountering, we will not accept it. It will not be acceptable going forward. And, and LaDonna, we will be coming for your job. You will be. We will run an opponent against you that can listen to the people. And if you cannot accommodate what is necessary and do and right and proper, we coming for you. And, and hey, I want to address. I want to address that. We know the meetings are live on uh, uh on their on their page. Everybody can't watch a meeting at one thirty in the evening or whatever. We got it. We got family stuff to take care of too. We can't just go. We can't just go watch a meeting at one thirty or go back yeah, and record it. You can I mean, always go. Yeah, yeah. We, could, we could record it too. But I mean, yeah. then it's on to the next issue. But as far as going up there addressing the problems, everybody sure. can't go up there address that problem that's but you true. still need to you still that's need true. to use social media and you still need to address us address the people i mean like i said if it's a, if it's a thousand potholes in the street you might complain but the only person that's going to go up to that council meeting is the person who got their uh tire busted mm -hmm. you know everybody's not yeah. going to be like to go up there and, and, and complain about it no it's just going to be that person that got their tire busted but for and you I think know, that man. the council members need to come on every podcast until they get their message heard. If I got a problem with my council members and my cohorts and my compadres, then I need to go on the kickback, the blue table talk, DJ Man TV, the perspective. I need to go on all of these platforms and state my concerns. I have an issue. I am right. your council member in Ward 4. I'm your council member in Ward 2. I'm your council member in Ward 1. And I am meeting uh, adversity in the city council meetings. Okay, they have, let know. they have Facebook pages. So I mean, if you're not trying to use social media, don't have a Facebook page. Just let agree. us know I'll agree what's going that. on. I'll let the, let the community hear you. Now, uh, knowledge is power podcast. Uh, uh, we're we're going to have each and every candidate, uh, the incumbents, and also the uh, the candidates. And uh, we're going to have each one of them on our show um, um, now going forward in February and uh, March and April uh, on uh, towards the election. Day. So and then we're going to have a special uh, with all of us. We're going to have a special uh, debate with all the candidates all together so that the public can ask questions or we can read out your comments to them. It's going to be especially for the community. Uh, the podcast is going to present it, and we're going to be here to present it, but we're going to have the candidates on so that we can uh, talk. We're going to ask questions. We're going to, uh, we want to know who we have, the real deal or fake. And uh, we've had enough of the fake uh, candidates that uh, has been here uh, for years and, uh, and we want progress. You know, let's 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 change the subject now and let's talk about infrastructure. We've heard we know we've got an infrastructure problem in Beaumont. Mm -hmm. We know this. We knew this two years ago. We knew this four years ago. We knew this six years ago. And not one of those that issue, that particular issue has not been solved. And we keep voting the same people back in office that is stagnant this city. The same thing we've been talking about. It's the same, it's the same. The bigger the headache, the bigger the pill. We keep we're talking about it, but we've got to put the right people in place and know who we're putting in. We're coming. Come on, guy. We coming. So I'm gonna go on on here and, and pull out uh, a, a comment uh, here. Uh, I don't know who I can go with, and let's answer their questions if you have any. 
Uh, so those are watching and you would like to comment, want, like to ask a question and let's see, uh, please uh, drop up. I got a comment on my phone just recently. Brandon Johnson said he's announced his run uh, for War 4 and War he's super excited About to let time. you guys know that he's making an announcement tonight that he's running for he's a War really 4. About time, Brandon. You should have, I mean... What's I mean, I'm proud of you, man, and you probably got my vote, to be honest with you. But I mean, we want a commitment from you also. Just because you're my homie, I don't mean I'm gonna take it easy on you also, too. No, nobody's getting, nobody's getting a free pass. Nobody's getting a pass, but he is announcing his candidacy for war four. He's running, he's super excited about that. He wanted me to announce it right here on the podcast with the blue table talk and DJ Man TV, the perspective, knowledge is power. Brandon Johnson has announced his candidacy for War 4. Okay, congratulations. Woo! All right. All right. Uh, Ike, you're back with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, oh, Pastor Tyrone, what do you think about that for War 4? But, uh, you know, the key is the key is this. The key to the board is four. Oh, everybody got quiet. I don't know. No, we were waiting on something? Pastor. His mic was popping, but we were waiting here for Pastor. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought. I thought. I was hearing Pastor Renfro talk, and did I did I see him throwing up the fours? I thought he was representing for South Park there for a second. I didn't know. He was throwing up the fours. I got quiet. I didn't know. Did you hear what he say? Did you hear him say, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Renfro? <laughs> wait, wait, you must. I, 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 said, I got my beginner's license. No, speak those <laughs> things that be not as I got, my beginner's, I got my beginner's <laughs> preacher's license. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, say, uh, uh, let's go here. But, you know, uh, now who, who is running in who's running in War 2? Miles, Miles Haynes and uh, is it uh, my guess? Yeah, that's only two I know so far. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's right that has a, I don't even know. Do you know if Miles has announced? Yeah, he announced. It's now okay. last week. Yes, he announced okay. last week. Okay. okay, those are the only two that I know for awards. Yeah. Like Terry said, he said, what makes you think we have the right proper candidates? We don't know. I don't know if Miles is the proper candidate, but we're going to find out, though. Right. Who else has got yeah. there? Who they got? Yep, that's that's why we want you to tune in to the debate yeah. on April third, so you can make sure that we're putting the right people in in place. Right, right. He that's might be a great guy, but I want to know if he's a great candidate, though. I right, think yeah. and also too, we may decide on April third we don't have nobody. We might need some more people to come out the woodwork. It might that, be. It that. might the might determination cool. might be none of y'all ain't in. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But you know, you got to remember that. It. The deadline is the deadline is February the eleventh. I thought it was there. the fifteenth. Okay, everybody that's sitting at home that think you want to run, come this on. This is it. Well, <laughs> this me, is it. Let me pause. Let me pause right now for those who's watching, uh, those who are going to watch us later on in all the podcasts, because I know we're sharing it all over the place. Let me kind of make an announcement with that. Uh, we're having uh, the CDC ev eviction monitor monitorum. And rental assistance is still available. And uh, please share this information on getting assistance with your rent and all your utilities. You can call, uh, let's see, I've got a number here. Yes, you can call the number. There we go. The number's on the tech ticker. Uh, the um, Some other place at 409-832-7976. The Habitat for Humanity. Uh, you can call 409-832-5853. That is uh, still available. Um, so I want you all to know about that uh, the, in the community. Also, on Tuesday, I want you guys to join us uh, that we're going to have, which I'm not a Cowboy fan, but we're going to have, uh, yes, we're going to have Mel Renfro, uh, the Dallas Cowboy five-time All-Pro selection, 
and the NFL Hall of Fame will be our special guest on this Tuesday, January the 3rd. Don't you miss this show? Um, and hey, hey, Tony, didn't you say you was jumping ship? Uh, you was jumping off the Texans, huh? No, man, I no, I, 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 I don't, don't get me started now. <laughs> Please, 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 so, but if you're watching, if you round Tuesday at eight o'clock, John is on now. John is on Knowledge's Power Podcast. Uh, let's see here. Let me move on to our next deal here. Who we have here? Uh, I'm gonna go to the comments and see if we've got any fresh comments. It's on who want to ask a question? No, we do not. Uh, well, let's see. one here. Um, and I, I'm gonna say this: if we're going to vet these people, this gentleman said. Sometimes we do not ask the proper questions. Um, um, but Send what, us your questions. Because one thing about it, yeah, I am the questions. interrogator. Yeah, we, and and whoever, the interrogator whoever come on this show, whoever come on this show, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get your ass tore up. Let me say that before the past John, top, past Tyrone come back on. In his ass. <laughs> In his you better tell him, Tony. You better yeah. tell him. Yeah. There is. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, we go, we won't pick out the right candidate. If we don't have the right candidate, then guys, we got to get the right candidates in place. Tell we're, not again, vote, Tony. we're not gonna vote just because of your color, the skin, the, the color of your skin. We want to vote for the the proper, the best possible candidate that's running. Tell them again, Tony, what's gonna happen to him? If you come on this show as a candidate, we're gonna tear your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I, I just hey, that's it. I mean, hey, that you chose to be a candidate. That if you don't come on the show, then you we're gonna scratch you off the list. <laughs> I'm gonna interrogate you down. No vote. So we're gonna invite. We're gonna invite every candidate that's running for a position in Beaumont, in the city of Beaumont, Texas. They're gonna join our show. I'm going to invite them to join our show for one hour and they can say what they want to say. We're going to ask, we're going to give them 15 minutes of frame and then we're going to 45 minutes of questions. And those who are watching the show, you can comment and we're going to post your comments and we're going to ask that question. So that's going to start right out the uh, Black History Month that we're having here in February, February. Uh, and uh, so, but remember, Knowledge is Power podcast is black every day, you know. So, but it, it, every month, but we want to make sure that we observe that month for our black history. Now, if you if you please go to our Knowledge is Power Power podcast Facebook page, you'll find a lot of black history, untold black history stories that you never heard, never knew nothing about. It. So I'm going to go to back to uh, uh, the West African Florida. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, God damn. oh, my bad. Y'all heard that? Yeah, yeah. we heard that. Yeah. That's, not right. it, 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 that's, not, that's nothing new here. No. That's nothing new on this show. Okay. Oh, okay. My bad. That's all right. Well, let, let's post this up. I think we've got a question there. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to get both. There we go. Hey, Mary. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary. Mary said, I, said, I hope you tear the ass up a little bit. <laughs> right? That's what she said. I just, I, he has divided this city and no talking to him. Okay, let's go move on here. Let's go here. We got uh, Terry Ross. I'd like to know what their plans are for infrastructure issues. Not just a blanket uh, statement that everyone gives. You're right. We, we're going to we, we want to make sure that we have questions and we're going to ask the right questions. Um, yeah, we're gonna dive deep. Uh, we're gonna dive Adam deep. Johnson saying that February the twelfth is the deadline to uh, uh, to apply for a position if you're gonna run as a candidate. Uh, let's see here. here uh, someone else said is Miles Hayes is Hayes is a um, is a oh, great yeah. guy. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've so, served yeah. on a lot of committees with Miles. 
he, he got to be. He, oh, what makes all you think we have a proper candidate now? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'm gonna stop right there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, we, I said, we already answered that question. Yeah, we don't yeah. know. That's why we're having the debate. And if we decide on February third, if that's our debate, is that our debate day? April. 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 Well, we 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 should have had some sort of. Well, before April third, you our show is going to have invite all the candidates one on one. About to say hindsight is twenty twenty, but we really need to see before then. Yeah, yeah. We're going one on one before we have a mass debate on April the third. Okay, let's move on here. Um, and Andrew Timothy Robinson said, "Bummer streets are the worst." We already know that. We, yeah, we already know that. It's like. Uh, 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 Iraq got better streets than we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us something we don't ask the right question. Yeah, we we gonna ask the right hard question. Now. Don't worry about we that. We gonna, yeah, we gonna ask the right question. Uh, don't worry. Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a showdown. Write your questions yeah, now. Yeah, All right, let's right, right, stay here. Let's go back to some more. Let's see here. I, I like to. I like to add Brandon on here, but Brandon, now since you have announced your candidacy, we're going to move on from your question and we're going to go over to uh, uh, also Ms. Robinson saying your relationship with councilmen and at large candidates. And you're right, we do need to have a relationship with our candidate. We need to know how, who our candidate when and now before the election, but after the election, we should have a. Um, we need to know who we are. It should actually be quarterly, like a quarterly update. If you promise something, something was posed, city council meeting, they, that's a great way to hold them accountable, just a quarterly update. I say some sort of report card where we can score you. It's the now meeting the mark. Okay. This Tuesday, this Tuesday is city council meetings at six o'clock. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask this question. Do you guys think that we should, we should have council meeting at six o'clock instead of one thirty? Yes. Yeah, if not six o'clock, at least later on in the evening. Absolutely. It's, it's like a good time because if those that's working downtown, and we know that's not very many people working downtown, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives you time to get off, drive if you're driving from Mid County from work, and get there for six o'clock. I think six o'clock is a great time to start a uh, city council meeting. And I think the meeting should be at six o'clock. And every three every three months, we have one at one thirty. That's that's just yeah. turning around. That's flipping around because a lot of us want to get involved now. We are involved now, but we'd like to get involved. Mm -hmm. A lot of you all can't get off of work to get there. You can't that's get true. A lot of you uh, shift workers, you know. So. You know that yeah, I watch it every week on online I, I, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I like when it goes back that we all can go. I like it to be at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we want we want to make sure that we 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 emphasize this to the uh, 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 the candidates what we're wanting uh, if they if they get voted in. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's bad? Mm -hmm. We want to see that at the table. That's what we're saying. Okay. Uh, also, we're going to, and also, I, you talked about the bus. That's another thing. We got to make sure that that did not happen. A bus system. Yeah. The transit system. It's a system. We got to mm -hmm. make sure that that, that do not happen. And we yeah. got to make sure that we, we emphasize that to the candidates that we. I was going to say. We can go to all the oh, had something he wanted to say, but he could, he left, so I don't know. He's coming back. Okay, let's see. He's coming back. I, anyway, I, I just want to add for uh, for the people who are saying that that we we're not going to ask the right questions or the right questions might not get asked. I think that's what's so best about doing all of this stuff virtually, the debate, the podcast, everything is that if we're not asking the right questions, all you have to do is type in the, in the comment box and and help us to ask the right questions. So Absolutely. I mean, it's not just a, it is not just a podcast thing. It's not just the Beaumont Urban. No, this is our community. We're asking the questions. We want to know, you know, when things are going to change, when things are going to be fixed around here. 
when is uh, we want the community and we want to see the Boeing to be better for us and our grandchildren. So this is your opportunity to jump on one of these podcasts or jump on the uh, the debate on a- April 3rd and, and get your questions asked also. This is directly going Absolutely. to the candidate. Absolutely. I like that comment. I got you back, uh, back Pastor. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, man. I keep getting kicked off, man. I keep getting kicked off. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, got I, that weak wife guy know, over there. Say, uh, you went to the dog store and got that <laughs> route <right around her. laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, I tried to get closer to the router. Yeah, I tried to get closer to the router. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, quick question. I keep hearing those same things. I keep hearing those same things like nobody's going to get our vote. Uh, we're not giving votes away. Uh, that nobody's going to get our vote just because we're black. And I think that those things are, are great things. Of course, that almost should be things that we should have to say, but that's not always the case. And I keep keep hearing us say but you know we're going to hold everybody accountable and i don't know i don't i just don't know if that's actually true though you know um i see people already i've seen taylor neal i've seen several african-american uh people with influence already give taylor neal um an endorsement and say oh he's mm-hmm. great good in this um whether it's come out of our mouth or not even with just association we've got to be careful that we're not endorsing people and I, I just want to see each candidate, and I want to see the African American candidates. I hope that we we don't uh, make the mistake of, of of being tougher on our candidates. We we should hold them accountable for sure, but I think that we should apply that across the board to every individual. Um, and we, as we're looking for a candidate, not just how well they're going to represent their ward, but I do think we got to add in another factor how we're going to judge them. How, what is the chemistry going to be like with the other candidates? Because like we're saying, if somebody, if something failed to get passed in our particular neighborhood or war, if the other councilman weren't willing to work with them. And, and we've agree. got a great indicator if, if of the individuals who sit on the board right now, we've got a great indicator of who all usually aligns with each other. Uh, uh, you, my guess, usually Neil. Uh, pay usually these guys are pretty al- lined up. So we we I think even if we're if we're saying we want to hold everybody accountable, in what ways are they are they, are they going to be willing to differ and go and part ways with each other? Because uh, usually those three are, are, are usually we see that they are pretty aligned with each other. So the same energy that we're that we're saying you're not just going to get my vote because you're black, which I I, I don't see that coming from. I, I've never seen that question posed from from some of our white. Uh, citizens of Oman. I've just never heard it put that way. So I'm always just a little taken back when I hear blacks say that, although it's a true statement, but we I've never heard anybody reference that to guests or to Neil or say anything like that. But I mean, they, that, they do I do it, they just don't sure say it. The same energy yeah. with some of these other candidates who we've already indicated that, that they should fly with each other. You know, Pastor, you great bring up a great point because we will hold our candidates I think to I'm a not. super extreme standard and let the white people get by with stuff that we won't let ourselves. We won't allow us to be us, but we will allow a four opportunity and skip passes and hall passes and uh, play patsy for things that other people will do. But for us, there's a zero tolerance. I, you brought up a point, very important point. We need to address that in the black community. We need to address that, make sure that we know that it is a thing and then address it as if it is a thing because it is very real. And I've been in business for 14 years and I've seen other businesses be allowed uh, or giving leeway to do things that I have to maintain a diamond quality standard across the board where they might give you silver or bronze and you go with it but i have to maintain a diamond quality standard across the board well i I would also like to um uh talk about a point that you made pastor about um the camaraderie and ensuring that the people that are elected are come are basically coming together basically trying to work together to make it a better beaumont not to just prove points 
Because at that point, now you're just wasting time and nobody's getting anywhere. So I think that is really important to kind of look at the character of those individuals and we just lost him. But I think that is that, I mean, I've seen city council kind of go around in circles and circles and circles for full terms and not really get anywhere due to them not, you know, personally possibly not getting along. So we definitely want to just kind of watch out for those cues as well. So that's a great point, very valid. West African Floyd, you have something to say. Well, as far as, <laughs> as, as, far as us <laughs> checking uh, our black politicians or whoever is in that uh, seat, um, like I was referring to earlier, if you don't tell us the issues that you're having as far as getting certain things passed, then we go we go apply that pressure on you because we don't know. You need to let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I said, use social media. We don't know. And like I said, everybody can't make a meeting. Uh, every, people might work shift work. People got kids. Uh, you got single parents out there. You know, they can't just go to a meeting like that. So uh, as far as black people, I mean, I mean, as far as our, us checking each other, we do that all the time, even with uh, black businesses. If you have mm -hmm. a restaurant and let's just say your fries cold, then best believe that person is going to get on social media and blast. Talk about that's why I don't support B.O.B. But you go to McDonald's and the fries be all bad. And then next two weeks later, you're going back over there. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we do have an issue with that as far as uh, holding accountability on us more harder. But as far as. Uh, I think of the politicians, uh, we expect that. We expect, I mean, we tough on each other. We expect you to go out there and, uh, you know, battle for us. And if you're battling for us and you can't get uh, your point across because of other council members, then you need to let the people know. You need to let the people in the streets know so we can have your back and go to these type of meetings and uh, ask these questions of why we can't get this certain thing passed. Why are you holding this back? So. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a politician, the game dirty. So, I mean, sometimes you gotta you gotta rock with the game. You gotta know how to play the game. Mm -hmm. Use social media to so we can go put this heat on these other council members or this mayor to why is this not getting passed? I mean, That's sometimes true. you got I mean you gotta play the game how it's supposed. I mean how it's played. So, if you need a street team, if you need somebody to help you with that as far as social media, holler at me. I can help you out with that. Not only that, I feel like when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans, baby. Let's go. If they got if they got problems, you do. Hey, you got to roll with it the way it's being rolled with. Well, that's going to wrap our show on up for our Saturday evening. Uh, I'm going to get the last Hold on. one. That's it. We don't, we only been here an hour and a half. I know, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know, our show don't last no more than about 30, 35 minutes. Okay, okay something special and I think this we need to know so they so the audience in our community know that what our podcast all about not just ours but your podcast okay, uh, the prospectors and, and Isaac and all you guys uh we want them to know what we're 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 doing and we're part of the influence to make sure that we get the word out that we're going to be some enforcers in our community um, one thing I want to say before we go is uh, I respect the fact that everybody has their own social media platform and they have their own views and they can reach different people. And uh, I, I want to say, man, I like what all y'all doing, man. I appreciate what y'all doing. Perspective, knowledge is power. The other podcast. And I think we definitely need that in Beaumont. Uh, and man, I, I'm proud of y'all. I salute y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I thank you, Tyron, Isaac. Francis, Madonna, and the, the West African flag. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. And uh, again, <laughs> and, uh, you know what? I, I just want to say this. I'm so proud of uh, you guys for kind of donating me up to that. I, I hope to live up to. I hope to live up to everything that she was able to do grassroots, really just putting her hands in the dirt and rolling back her sleeves and getting in the trenches. Cause I'm here for all of that. And everything yes, I do, I do it for BMT. Yeah. And I, I think this is big money, Texas. I'm not gonna change my mind and we can do it if we try. 
<laughs> hey guys, don't go nowhere. We're gonna close, but stay with me uh, for about five minutes after the show or backstage, and um, and uh, we're gonna shut it down right now. So we ask you guys right now, everybody, please share our podcast. Let's get the message out. We are with podcasts, um, um, knowledge is power. We are on YouTube, Spotify. We are on quite a bit of shows: Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, Google Play, whatever you want to look at, we, we, we're there all over the place. All iHeartRadio, we're there. So, uh, and the also, say something, Tony. So, you guys on your podcast, if you like to, 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 to share our platform and all these other uh, area and on social media, share, send me the, the podcast and I'll post it up for you, okay? Got it. All right. Pastor, you have something you want to say? Oh no, I no, I enjoyed our enjoyed our time. I know on behalf of perspective, thank you guys for having us. And uh, all of you guys are doing a great job with your show. I'll pop in from time to time. Uh, but uh, lastly though, Pastor Renfro and uh in Southeast Texas, Stacey Abrams, and even even Pastor West African Floyd. I'm gonna have to get y'all out here one Sunday. At one point during the show, all y'all so, uh, we'll do that. So I'm have to on a Sunday morning to come close it out for me. But no, thank right. you guys for having us. We really appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. God bless. I love you. Thank you for watching Knowledge is Power Podcast Live. Be sure to like and subscribe to all Knowledge is Power social media pages.